Yeah, I got... Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to try not to go too in-depth about this one, especially considering uh, I definitely have a more critical view of this one as opposed to the very enthusiastic review I had for uh, for the uh, upcoming season of Arrow. I, now, <clears throat> the series that I am currently talking about, obviously, as if you couldn't tell by the, by the uh, video title, is Gotham. Now... As if you couldn't guess by the title, Gotham is actually is actually a prequel to the uh, to the standard Batman universe. It takes place immediately after Bruce Wayne's parents are gunned down in Crime Alley, and it's and it basically marks itself as this uh, noir police procedural starring Commissioner Gordon, who is I don't think is Commissioner at this point, but it basically follows him and his adventures solving crimes in in the, uh, like I've said, noir-esque uh, setting of Gotham City. He goes around with, with Harvey Bullock, and he, and he encounters many, many individuals who will later become part of Batman's rogues gallery. He, uh, the creators have said that they will explore the origins of several Batman rogues, including Poison Ivy, Catwoman, the Penguin, the Riddler, the Scarecrow, the list goes on. Now this particular crime opera is actually created by Bruno Heller. Bruno Heller, if you don't know, being the man responsible for for TV's Rome and and The Mentalist. Okay, so we know this guy has is not exactly a neophyte when it comes to the television industry, which makes it all the more intriguing from from a uh, from a technical point of view. From just on paper, this sounds like an interesting concept. However. There are a few issues I have with it. First of all, we just got done with Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. Batman and his rogues gallery have been explored time and time again, whether it be in the comic books, the TV series, the movies. Batman and his and his little uh, universe in Gotham City is not exactly uh, it's not exactly breaking new ground. The thing with the thing with Arrow, and I think what makes it uh, one of the things that makes Arrow so interesting to me, anyway, is is the fact that that uh, the Green Arrow is not exactly a mainstream superhero like Batman is, or at least not on the level of someone like Batman, Superman, and to a lesser extent Wonder Woman. People don't really know who the Green Arrow is, or at least general audiences don't really know who the Green Arrow is. Obviously, fans do. But if you went up to, to someone who is completely uninitiated in the realm of comics, um, who just walked off the street and just wants to see an action show, he is not. He is probably not going to know who the Green Arrow is. He's going to know who Batman is. He's he's at least going to know a general description of Batman, but he's he's not going to know who Green Arrow is. So. So that's that's my first issue. Why are we already, why are, why are we already going back into the into the barrel of Batman related stories. I mean, haven't, haven't those been done to death? Even the DC animated lineup of movies, the, the original movies that have been coming out for years, most of them focus on either Batman, Superman, both of them, or the Justice League, okay? You would think that, that they would give someone else a shot at this point. And this is especially considering Considering how how Marvel, once again, Marvel is is taking big risks here, and uh, and hopefully they'll pay off. Marvel is developing is developing Netflix TV shows on on a bunch of their lesser known heroes. In addition, they have they have done one season of Agents of Shield, about to do another, and they're doing Agent Carter, and they're about to release a movie based on the Guardians of the Galaxy. One of the most obscure teams of superheroes in all of comics. Okay, so so you'll forgive me if conceptually I'm a little disappointed with Gotham. However, actually, actually, no, I have one more major gripe. Okay, one more major gripe in in that just based on on the on the description that they have given. On, on the general premise that they that they are marketing this as having, it doesn't really interest me much as a fan, because 
because personally I'm not too interested, again, at least on paper, at least before having seen the show, um, I'm not really that interested in Commissioner Gordon being a main character, I'm not that interested in seeing the origins of these characters in a TV show. I think the origins of these characters could be covered could be covered and could be connected to Batman just fine. I like Commissioner Gordon, I like Batman's rogues gallery, but there is a big risk upon watching this that 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 the feeling will pop up of, hey, something is missing from this show. I mean, even if they I mean, even if they do everything right, there there may be this nagging feeling. I'm not saying I'm not saying there will be. Again, I haven't really seen I have yet to see to actually watch the show in its entirety. The first ep the first season will be about uh, 16 episodes. Um there might be this nagging feeling of, well, this is pretty good. I sure wish it was a Batman show though. Because Commissioner Go because Commissioner Gordon, as as interesting as he can be, is not is not exactly who people think of when they think of Batman. They think of Batman. They think they think of when when people think of the most interesting character in in DC's lineup, they don't necessarily think of Commissioner Gordon. Now again, this this uh, this kind of brings me to what I could potentially get excited about for the seas for the series. In that you are expanding upon, upon a character that has up until this point been a supporting player, and upping him to a main character is a pretty bold move, in my opinion. It's kind of like what Marvel is doing with Agent Carter. So this could potentially be very interesting if they write the character to be strong enough, if they if they write to char the character to stand on its own. Because too often, Commissioner Gordon is just there as as a supporting player to Batman, someone, someone to inform Batman on the goings on the goings on of Gotham, someone to inform him about the bad guy. He's just he's just relegated to Batman's little assistant. Even even the good Batman stories, even the good Batman movies, the ones that people like, such as such as the first two Tim Burton Batman movies, Gordon is is usually pretty useless. So making him the main character again is a bold move, and if they do it right, then props to them. Another thing that has me that has me uh, potentially excited is, well, aside from the creator of the show, who again is is pretty experienced when it comes to making acclaimed shows, is is the cast. You have you have Ben McKenzie as Commissioner Gordon. Actually, no, he's he's not he's not Commissioner Gordon at this point. He's just uh, he's just James Gordon. The cast actually has me a little ha, has me kind of excited because you have Ben McKenzie, who who is by no means a stranger to to the Batman mythos, having having previously voiced the Dark Knight himself in the animated movie adaptation of Batman Year One. I don't really know if that familiarity will will actually help him fit comfortably into the role of Gordon because he didn't actually voice Gordon in that in that movie. Like I said, he voiced Batman. The real voice of Gordon in that movie, and I would argue the star of that movie, was Brian Cranston. So, so Ben McKenzie, based on what we've seen, he doesn't have the handlebar Gordon mustache. He honestly looks just like Russell Crowe from L.A. Confidential, the movie L.A. Confidential. It's The resemblance is uncanny. So, so I don't really know what type of Commissioner Gordon that they're going for. And, and... Another potential disadvantage with the character of Gordon being and his being surrounded by all of these other uh, dirty cops, all of these other criminals, all of these larger-than-life characters, is that Gordon, in comparison, could seem not quite as interesting or a little bland if if they don't do it right. If they if they make Gordon just your straight-up nice guy, just this complete incorruptible character, then. Then, kind of look like what happened with uh, the Rachel Dawes character in the Dark Knight movies, you risk making him just a boring character in comparison to everyone around him. However, in addition, there's Donald Logue as as Harvey Bullock, quite a departure, at least 
at least in terms of his uh, look, his design, from the Harvey Bullock that I'm used to, which is the one from Batman the Animated Series, who sounds like Danny DeVito. Okay, so... So Donald Logue, fresh off of Vikings, he's going to play Harvey Bullock, so can't really complain about that. There's also Jada Pinkett Smith and a slew of other of other actors, okay? And the villains themselves don't necessarily look miscast, or at least not when taking into account that they are playing younger versions of themselves, or or younger versions of these villains. Um, the the newcomer chick, or not the the relative newcomer chick, uh, what's her name? Cameron Bikendova, or Bikendova, as a teenage street punk Selena Kyle. She honestly looks like a brunette version of Michelle Pfeiffer. That's what she looks like to me. A brunette version of a teenage Michelle Pfeiffer is what she looks like. So I don't know if that was intentional. Maybe they were trying to get her to look like Michelle Pfeiffer. I don't know. But, but uh, yeah, the villains themselves, I don't really know how they're going to handle them. And But but like anyone, I'm interested to see what they do with them if, if they... Because the thing with these villains is that they are interesting enough, all of these characters, in fact, could be interesting enough to where, to where you want to know more about them past, past whatever movie they star in. I think back to, to Batman Begins and, and Killian Murphy's portrayal of the Scarecrow. Killian Murphy did a fantastic job with, with uh, the Scarecrow and kind of laying out his motivations of respecting the mind's power over the body. And and potentially expanding on that in a TV show could really allow you to delve more into these characters' psyches than would be possible in a movie without completely dragging it down. Because a TV show, you have significantly more time to to lay out these seasonal arcs and and these and these uh, seasonal character growths. So there's that. However, some of these villains I just don't think could work without Batman. In fact, one villain in particular that they have teased a few times recently is the character of the Joker, potentially seeing him. Not as the Joker, maybe maybe some comedian. They, they have mentioned wanting to keep you guessing who the Joker is. But the thing with the Joker is that he's, he's the perfect Batman villain because the, he is the pure antithesis of Batman, okay? Stealing, stealing direct quote, a direct quote from Alan Burnett there. He really is the antithesis of Batman. He is the exact opposite, and he really feels in his in his demented mind that uh, he could not exist without Batman. And it goes past just you know falling into the vat of chemicals. Um, I mean, the Joker and Batman have this ongoing relationship that the Joker just revels in. And taking Batman out of the equation, I think you, I think you take away one of the Joker's primary motivations. So, so you'll forgive me if I don't think that uh, they could they could bring the Joker to life as well as they would if if the series was about Batman um, and probably the biggest risk I, I've seen I can sense with this show is is that uh, again I keep using using this word there is the potential of of it just feeling like another police procedural cop show because as much as we hate to admit it, the, pro the police procedural is a very saturated genre in television these days. Whether you're talking about Law and Order, NCIS, CSI, The Mentalist, all of these, all of these uh, different different shows, Criminal Minds, Hawaii Five-O, all of these shows are 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 dealing with some with some sort sort of cop drama, okay, and introducing. This show, with Commissioner Gordon, a cop, as the main character and dealing with the Gotham City Police Department, could potentially just be another one in the in the lineup, and and audiences may be a little uh, maybe a little tired of that. Audiences may may think, well, why would I watch this instead of uh, instead of something like NCIS or or the remake of Hawaii Five O, because it just kind of blends in. So really, I think the what this show has to do to differentiate itself, and what it's and what it looks like it's going to do, is that is um, really take advantage of the setting. 
and and the atmosphere make make Gotham City this very noir um, slash gothic type of setting, and uh, and just just run wild with it. Just make just make this a very very stylized show that you wouldn't necessarily be able to get away with on something like Hawaii Five O with with obviously that setting of Hawaii. So so yeah, I have uh, very mixed feelings on on the Gotham TV show. I'm I'm not dreading it, not not by any means. Obviously, I hope it's good. I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to vote it down at this point. I'm just uh, I'm just a little skeptical in terms of the concept. Um especially considering how big a fan I am of the material. But even I am getting a little tired of of uh, numerous Batman related projects at this point. So I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please, please, no personal attacks. Um, just, just please comment on on what you think of the show. What you think are some potential advantages slash disadvantages disadvantages of the show, and whether or not you think it'll work if it if it utilizes the Gotham setting and really makes use of these villains. Could it potentially surpass the movies? I don't know. What do you think?